a special welcome to all of you joining today's broadcast through Mondo Visione and our partners at Catholic TV, Relevant Radio, Shalom TV, India, Catholic Faith Network, Sirius XM, and from New York, Shalom World TV, Radio Maria in Latvia, Radio Maria in England, EWTN, Sultan Light, Atmar Dashan TV in India, Luminous Radio, Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea. And from wherever you're joining us today, welcome. It is a very solemn and important occasion, and we are certainly glad to have you following today's broadcast with us. My name is Mary Shublin. It's a pleasure to be providing the commentary and translations for today on this special day, the Solemnity of the Annunciation, when throughout the Church we celebrate when the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the Virgin Mary to say that through the power of the Holy Spirit she would conceive and bear a son and that his name would be called Jesus. This is the day when the Word became flesh. It is the season of Lent as we continue our journey towards Easter, a time of penance and fasting, and today we will do that through the sacrament of penance here with Pope Francis. The Holy Father this year has added this special moment of prayer to this year's penance service. The solemn act of consecration of humanity and Russia and Ukraine in particular to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We see the procession making its way now into the Basilica. This is truly a universal moment of prayer. Pope Francis wrote a letter to the world's bishops asking them to join him in this gesture of consecration, this gesture of the universal church to invoke an end to the violence and suffering of innocent people. Pope Francis now making his way into the Basilica dressed in liturgical purple as we are in the time of Lent, purple signifying penance and this evening as we celebrate the sacrament of penance. Today's event will be marked by two main moments. The first will be the celebration of penance. We'll have readings from sacred scripture, followed by a homily from Pope Francis, and then he and many of the faithful here will go to confession. After that, we will have the act of consecration. A statue of Our Lady of Fatima has been brought to St. Peter's Basilica for that reason. It comes from the Sanctuary of Fatima here in Rome. We see many cardinals and archbishops joining the Holy Father here in the Basilica for the penance service and the consecration. He's invited bishops around the world to join him in this prayer. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI also participating in this evening's events through his chapel in the Mater Ecclesia Monastery here in Vatican City. Francis making his way around the high altar here in the Basilica towards the statue of Our Lady of, of Fatima. If you're watching this on TV, there on the right hand of your screen. Those of you joining us through Mondo Visione and all of our broadcast partners, a special welcome to all of you from wherever you're joining us today. Today's broadcast is being offered in 10 languages, including Chinese, Arabic, Russian, and Ukrainian. And it is truly reaching the four ends of the earth, four corners of the earth, as we join together to pray, as Pope Francis has asked, for peace.
En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Gracias a vos y paz de Dios nuestro Padre. The Holy Father prays grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life for our sins. Fratelli, Dios ci chiama ancora una volta. Brothers and sisters, God calls us once again to conversion. Let us pray for the grace of a new life in Christ the Lord. We now take a moment of silent prayer as we reflect on our sins. Dio onnipotente e misericordioso, che ci hai riuniti nel nome del tuo figlio. Almighty and merciful God, who have gathered us in the name of your Son to give us grace and mercy at the right time. Open our eyes so that we see when evil is committed and touch our hearts so that we may be converted to you. May your love reassemble in unity that which sin has disrupted. May your power heal our wounds and strengthen our weakness. May your spirit renew our whole life and give us back the strength of your charity so that the image of your Son may shine in us and that all people may recognize in the face of the Church the glory of him whom you sent. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We will now have the first reading, which is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, chapter 1. Dalla lettera di San Paolo Apostolo ai Colossesi. A reading from St. Paul to the Colossians. Dal giorno in cui ne fummo informati, non cessiamo di pregare per voi. Brothers, from the day we heard this, we do not cease praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding to live in a manner worthy of the Lord, so as to be fully pleasing in every good work, bearing fruit and growing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with every power in accord with his glorious might, for all endurance and patience, with joy and giving thanks to the Father, who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Parola di Dio. Il Signore ha fatto conoscere la sua salvezza. This is the responsorial psalm. This evening is Psalm 97. The Lord has made his victory known. Ha fatto conoscere la sua salvezza agli occhi delle genti ha rivelato la sua giustizia egli si è ricordato del suo amore della sua fedeltà alla casa di Israele. The Lord has made his victory known, has revealed his triumph in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Tu 
tutti i confini della terra hanno veduto la vittoria del nostro Dio. Acclami al Signore tutta la terra, gridate, esultate, cantate inni. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Break into song, sing praise. Cantate inni al Signore con la cetra, con la cetra e al suono di strumenti a corde. Con le trombe al suono del corno, acclamate davanti al Re il Signore. Sing praise to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy to the King the Lord. The faithful now rising to their feet as we prepare to hear this evening's gospel on this, the feast of the Annunciation. The deacon now approaching the Holy Father, who will ask his blessing to worthily uh, proclaim the gospel. And we see Pope Francis also preparing the incense here as well, the symbol of our prayer rising up to God. As the Scola sings, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. The deacon who will proclaim this evening's gospel now bows before Pope Francis, who blesses him as he prepares to process the book of the gospels to the lectern where it will be proclaimed. very full St. Peter's Basilica this evening, about 3,500 people inside the Basilica. There are also another 2,000 outside in St. Peter's Square. Il Signore sia con voi. Dal Vangelo secondo A reading from the Gospel according to Saint Luke. In quel tempo L'angelo Gabriele fu mandato da Dio in una città della Galilea. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. 
and the Virgin's name was Mary. According to her, and coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Be not afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Parola del Signore. And after the Gospel reading, we prepare to hear Pope Francis' homily on today's readings. Nel Vangelo della Solennità Odierna, l'Angelo Gabriele per tre volte prende la parola e si rivolge alla Vergine Maria. In the Gospel reading for today's Solemnity, the Angel Gabriel speaks three times in addressing the Virgin Mary. The first is when he greets her and says, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The reason to rejoice, the reason for joy, is revealed in those words, The Lord is with you. Dear brother, dear sister, today you can hear those words addressed to you, to each one of us. You can make them your own each time you approach God's forgiveness, for there the Lord tells you, I am with you. All too often, we think that confession is about going to God with dejected looks, yet it is not so much that we go to the Lord, but that He comes to us to fill us with His grace, to fill us with His joy. Our confession gives the Father the joy of raising us up once more. At the center of everything we leave is not about our sins. This is the center of it. It's f about His forgiveness. Think about it. If our sins were at the heart of the sacrament, almost everything would depend on us, on our repentance, our efforts, our resolves. But no, He is at the center of it, far from it. 
The sacrament is about God who liberates us and puts us back on our feet. Let us recognize once more the primacy of grace and ask for the gift to realize that reconciliation is not primarily our drawing near to God, but his embrace that enfolds, astonishes, and overwhelms us. The Lord enters our home as he did that of Mary in Nazareth and brings us unexpected joy and amazement. Let us look at things from God's perspective. Then we will discover our love for confession. We need this for every interior rebirth, every spiritual renewal starts there from God's forgiveness. May we not neglect reconciliation, but rediscover it as the sacrament of joy, yes, of joy. For our shame for our sins becomes the occasion for an experience of the warm embrace of the Father, the gentle strength of Jesus who heals us, and the maternal tenderness of the Holy Spirit. This is the heart of confession. And so, brothers and sisters, let us go forward to receive forgiveness. And you, dear brother priests, who are ministers of God's forgiveness, offer to those who approach you the joy of this proclamation. Rejoice, the Lord is with you. Set aside rigidity, please, obstacles, harshness. May you be doors wide open to mercy, especially in confession. We are called to act in the person of the Good Shepherd, who takes his sheep into his arms and cradles them. We are called to be channels of grace that pour forth the living water of the Father's mercy on hearts grown arid, dry. If a priest does not have this way of being, and if he doesn't have these feelings in his heart, it's better that he doesn't go hear confessions. A second time, the angel speaks to Mary. She was troubled by his greeting, and so he tells her, Do not be afraid. The first was, Be not afraid. The Lord is with you. In the scriptures, whenever God appears to those who receive him, he, utters, he loves to utter those words, Be not afraid. He says them to Abraham, repeats them to Isaac, to Jacob, and so on, and to Joseph and Mary. In this way, he sends us a clear and comforting message. Once our lives are open to God, fear can no longer hold us in thrall, because fear does that. It holds us hostage. Dear sister, dear brother, if your sins frighten you, if your past worries you, if your wounds do not heal, if your constant failings dishearten you and you seem to have lost hope, please be not afraid. God knows your weaknesses and is greater than your mistakes. God is greater than our sins, much greater. He asks of you only one thing, that you not hold your frailties and sufferings inside. Bring them to him. Lay them before him. And from being reasons for despair, they will become opportunities for resurrection. Be not afraid. The Lord asks for our sins. I remember the story of the monk in the desert who gave everything to God. And he had a life of, pee, of fasting and prayer. And the Lord asked for more. And he said, Lord, I've given you everything, the monk said. What else can I give you? The Lord says, give me your sins. And this is what the Lord asks of us. Be not afraid. 
La Vergine Maria ci accompagna. The Blessed Virgin Mary accompanies us. She cast her own anxiety upon God. The angel's proclamation gave her good reason to be afraid. He proposed to her something unimaginable and beyond her abilities, something that she could not handle alone. There would be too many difficulties, problems with the Mosaic Law, with Joseph, with the citizens of her town, and with her people. Yet Mary did not reject. Those words, be not afraid, were sufficient for her. God's reassurance was enough for her. She clung to him as we want to do tonight. Yet so often we do the exact opposite. We start from our own certainties and when we lose them we turn to God. Our Lady, on the other hand, teaches us to start from God, trusting that in this way everything will be given to us. She invites us to go to the Source, to the Lord, who is the ultimate remedy against fear and emptiness in life. There is a lovely phrase written above the confessional here in the Vatican that reminds us of this. It addresses God with these words, To turn away from you is to fall, to turn back to you is to rise, to abide in you is to have life. To turn away from you is to fall, to turn back to you is to rise, to abide in you is to have life. In these days, news reports and scenes of death continue to enter our homes, even as bombs are destroying the homes of many of our defenseless Ukrainian brothers and sisters. The vicious war that has overtaken so many people and caused suffering to all has made each of us fearful and anxious. We sense our helplessness and our inadequacy. We need to be told, do not be afraid. Yet human reassurance is not enough. We need the closeness of God and the certainty of his forgiveness which alone eliminates evil, disarms resentment, and restores peace to our hearts. Let us return to God and to His forgiveness. A third time the angel speaks to Mary and says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Lord is with you, be not afraid, and the third thing he says is the Holy Spirit will come upon you. This is how God intervenes in history, by giving his very spirit. For in the things that matter, our own strength is not enough. By ourselves we cannot succeed in resolving the contradictions of history or even those of our own hearts. We need the wisdom and gentle power of God, that is the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of love, who dispels hatred, soothes bitterness, extinguishes greed, and rouses us from indifference. The Spirit gives us harmony. He is harmony. We need God's love, for our love is fragile and insufficient. We ask the Lord for many things, but how often we forget to ask Him for what is important and what He desires most to give us, the Holy Spirit, the power to love. Indeed, without love, what can we offer this world? It has been said that a Christian without love is like a needle that does not sew. It stings, it wounds, but if it fails to sew, weave, or patch, it is useless. And this is not a Christian. This is why we need to find in God's forgiveness the power of love, the same Spirit who descended upon Mary. If we want the world to change, then first our hearts must change. For this to happen, let us allow Our Lady to take us by the hand. Let us gaze upon her immaculate heart in which God dwelt, our tainted nature's solitary boast. For Mary is full of grace and thus free from sin. 
In her, there was no trace of evil, and hence, with her, God was able to begin a new story of salvation and peace. There, in her, history took a turn. God changed history by knocking at the door of Mary's heart. Today, renewed by God's forgiveness, may we too knock at the door of her Immaculate Heart. In union with the bishops and faithful of the world, I desire in a solemn way to bring all that we are presently experiencing to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I wish to renew to her the consecration of the Church and the whole of humanity and to consecrate to her in a particular way the Ukrainian people and the Russian people who with filial affection venerate her as a mother. This is no magic formula but a spiritual act. It is an act of complete trust on the part of children who amid the tribulation of this cruel and senseless war that threatens our world turn to their mother. Like children when they're Scared, they run to their mother seeking protection. We give her all of our fears, all their fears and pain in her heart and abandoning themselves to her. It means placing in that pure and undefiled heart where God is mirrored the inestimable goods of fraternity and peace, all that we have and are, so that she, the mother whom the Lord has given us, may protect us and watch over us. Mary then uttered the most beautiful words that the angel could bring back to God. Let it be done to me according to your word. Hers was no passive and resigned acceptance, but a lively desire to obey God, who has plans for welfare and not for evil. Hers was the most intimate sharing in God's plan of peace for the world. We consecrate ourselves to Mary in order to enter into this plan, to place ourselves fully at the disposal of God's plans. After having uttered her fiat, her yes, the Mother of God set out on a long journey to the hill country to visit a relative who was with child. She went with haste, and I like to think of the Madonna this way. Our Lady, who hurries to come to our assistance and protect us. May she now take our own journey into her hands. May she guide our steps through the steep and arduous paths of fraternity and dialogue along the way of peace. Pope Francis finishing his homily reflection on today's feast of the Annunciation, the words that the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary and her faithful response, that as the Holy Father said, changed the course of history. We see the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, if you're following this on television, the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, which has brought, been brought to the Basilica for the special consecration this evening. What's happening now is, because we are still in the penitential service, we take a moment to examine our conscience. The deacon announcing there that we should take this moment to pray to the Holy Spirit that he may illuminate us of our sins, everything that is keeping us uh, from God. That is what this evening's penitential service is about, and of course the season of Lent as we journey towards Easter, towards the resurrection, 
we take these 40 days of Lent to fast, pray, confess our sins, and change our hearts. Pope Francis as well, take a moment of silence and prayer, as is everyone here in the Basilica, and we are invited to join in as well, following on TV, radio, and through social media. Take a moment and uh, reflect on our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. As Pope Francis mentioned in his homily just a few moments ago, he said this sacrament is about God who liberates us and puts us back on our feet. He said, let us recognize once more the primacy of grace. Let us ask for the gift to realize that reconciliation is not primarily our drawing near to God, but his embrace that enfolds, astonishes, and overwhelms us. still have silence here in St. Peter's Basilica as everyone is entering into this examination of conscience the questions we ask ourselves we look at the Ten Commandments how have I failed in upholding the Ten Commandments how have I failed to love my brother or my sister my family we think about all the the sins that may be weighing on our hearts, keeping us from God's grace. And this part of this evening's celebration is quite important, and we see many taking this time to reflect. Holy Father inviting us now to confess our sins. The deacon says, let us kneel. I confess to Almighty God Please rise. Let us invoke Christ Jesus with confidence, conqueror of sin and death, so that he may reconcile us with God and with the Church, which we have wounded with our sins. We'll have, now have a series of prayers of supplication. The response is Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Lord, sent by the Father to bring the good news to the poor and heal broken hearts, have mercy on us. Lord, you have come to call and save sinners. Have mercy on us. Signore, 
che accogliesti la donna peccatrice. Lord, you welcomed the sinful woman and for her great love you forgave her many sins. Have mercy on us. Signore, che ti degnasti di stare insieme. Lord, who deigned to spend time with tax collectors and sinners, have mercy on us. Cristo, buon pastore. Christ, good shepherd, who bring the lost sheep on your shoulders back to the fold, have mercy on us. Signore, che non condannasti la donna adultera. Lord, you did not condemn the adulterous woman, but you sent her forth in peace. Have mercy on us. Signore, che chiamasti Zaccheus. Lord, you who called Zacchaeus, the tax collector, to conversion and new life, have mercy on us. Signore, che al ladrone pentito. Lord, you who promised heaven to the repentant thief, have mercy on us. Signore, che vivi e regni alla destra del Padre. You who live and reign at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf, have mercy on us. Ora nello spirito del Vangelo riconciliamoci. Now in the spirit of the gospel let us be reconciled among ourselves and let us invoke with faith God our Father and obtain forgiveness for our sins. Holy Father inviting us now to pray together the Our Father. Venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la tua volontà come in cielo così in terra. Dacci oggi il nostro pane quotidiano e rimetti a noi i nostri debiti, come anche noi li rimettiamo ai nostri debitori. Non abbandonarci la tentazione, ma liberaci dal male. O Dio, che nei tuoi sacramenti hai posto il rimedio alla nostra debolezza, fa che accogliamo con gioia i frutti della redenzione e li manifestiamo nel rinnovamento della vita. Per Cristo nostro Signore. The Holy Father prayed, Dear brothers, after experiencing in the sacrament, O God, who in your sacraments you remedied our weakness, let us welcome with joy the fruits of redemption, and we manifest them in the renewal of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So the Holy Father prayed. At this time, we will have the Sacrament of Confession. Priests will be in confessionals throughout the Basilica and will hear individual confessions. And while this happens, there will be moment, moments of silence. We'll be led in song also by the choir. And for those of us following along with TV, radio, and social media, we can look back over the Holy Father's words to us this evening about the importance of this sacrament and the importance of the consecration taking place this evening as well. Francis now passing in front of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima as he too makes his way to go to confession, leading by example. We 
see one of the confessionals there, these brown wooden boxes. In St. Peter's Basilica, they have the languages posted outside, and they confess people from languages from all over the world. Pope Francis beginning his individual confession with the priest and as others will do here this evening as well. The celebration of penance in this way during the season of Lent has been going on here in the Vatican since 2014. It's an initiative of the Pontifical Council for the promotion of the new evangelization and it takes place annually on the Friday and Saturday before the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's called 24 Hours for the Lord and this event kicks off that 24 hours uh, in which we have we focus on the sacrament of reconciliation, forgiveness. In fact the theme for this year's 24 Hours for the Lord is in Him we have forgiveness. The day is marked by Eucharistic adoration, individual reflection, an invitation to personal conversion. And so we are invited to contemplate the image of Jesus who, unlike the crowd which gathers to judge and condemn, he offers his infinite mercy as an opportunity for grace and new life. You'll see, if you're following us on TV, you'll see the confessionals. Again, these are the brown wooden uh, boxes all throughout uh, the Basilica. We see some of the faithful lining up there now. And this will go on now uh, for several minutes. Um, Again, those of us following along from home, it's also a good time for us to to take this time, maybe before we go to confession in our own parishes, uh, to our own a local parish priest take this moment of prayer with us here in the Vatican and we see many of the faithful in St. Peter's Basilica but also thousands have gathered outside about 2,000 people have gathered uh, to be part of this evening's celebration and consecration Pope Francis has concluded his confession and will now become the confessor, the one who hears confessions. It is certainly an extraordinary event when someone is able to go to confession to the Pope. Um, Pope Francis's predecessors did likewise, starting with John Paul II here in the Basilica. Sometimes the faithful would um, find him in the confessional by surprise uh, during the Lenten season. So um, this event is certainly a, a special time for the for the faithful who may get an opportunity to go to confession of the Pope Francis and of course every confession is a special grace a special gift um, wherever we're happy to receive the sacrament throughout the world but let us look back again as the faithful take the time to go to confession here let's look back on some of the words that Pope Francis has spoken about forgiveness and mercy and reconciliation As he said in his apostolic letter, Misericordia et Misera, the sacrament of reconciliation needs to rediscover its central place in the Christian life. The Holy Father very much supporting this initiative, 24 Hours of the Lord. He said this has great pastoral value in encouraging a more fervent experience of the sacrament of confession. Holy Father even mentioning in his homily this evening the great need for mercy. Uh, Holy Father 
discouraging any rigidity that might be present in the sacrament of confession, making way uh, for God's all-encompassing mercy. Father encouraging his brother priests he's saying may you be doors wide open to mercy especially in confession the Holy Father said this evening we are called to act in the person of the Good Shepherd who takes the sheep into his arms and cradles them As confessions continue here in St. Peter's Basilica, there are about 38 confessors. Adding to that another 20 from the official penitentiary here in Rome, and another nine Franciscan ones who are here in uh, St. Peter's Basilica. So all in all, almost a hundred, I think, confessors here present in St. Peter's Basilica, if they have that correct. Um, again, making it readily available to all uh, who have come out for this evening's penance service. also a time when we reflect on what the sacrament of penance is. We look at the catechism for the Catholic Church and they co it's called a sacrament of conversion because it makes sacramentally present Jesus is called to conversion, that first step in returning to the Father from whom one has strayed by sin. It is called the sacrament of penance, the catechism says, since it consecrates the Christian sinner's personal and ecclesial steps of conversion, penance and satisfaction of that penance. 
It is called the sacrament of confession, since the disclosure or confession of sins to a priest is an essential element of this sacrament, the Catechism says. In a profound sense, it is also a confession, acknowledgement, and praise of the holiness of God and of his mercy towards sinful man. It is called the sacrament of forgiveness, since by the priest's sacramental absolution, God grants the penitent pardon and peace. And we call it, it is called the sacrament of reconciliation because it imparts to the sinner the life of God who reconciles. As the scriptures say, be reconciled to God. He who lives by God's merciful love, the catechism says, is ready to respond to the Lord's call. Go first and be reconciled to your brother. As the scriptures say, It's time for us to reflect on what sin is. Um, Before all, the Catechism says sin is an offense against God, a rupture of our communion with Him. Therefore, the sacrament of penance is necessary to bring us back to the life in God's grace. Sin ruptures that communion, as this Catechism says. For this reason, conversion entails both God's forgiveness and reconciliation with the Church. Only God forgives sins, since He is the Son of God. As Jesus Himself said in Scripture, the Catechism points out, the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sin and exercises His divine power. Your sins are forgiven. Christ willed, the Catechism says, that in her prayer and life and action, his whole church should be the sign and instrument of forgiveness and reconciliation that he acquired for us at the price of his own blood. But he entrusted the exercise of the power of absolution to the apostolic ministry, which he charged with this ministry of reconciliation, the Catechism says. The apostle is sent out on behalf of Christ with God making his appeal through him, and pleading, be reconciled to God.
beautiful Holy Spirit window here at St. Peter's Basilica designed by Bernini, made with alabaster. As we continue the sacrament of reconciliation here in St. Peter's Basilica this evening, if you're just joining us, Pope Francis is leading this penance service this evening. Uh, right now, the faithful who are gathered here are waiting in line and going to confession, part of any good Lenten journey. After this celebration of penance, the Holy Father will proceed with the act of consecration of all humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. following this on television we see on the right hand video screen the statue of Our Lady of Fatima in the center of course the crucifix Mary always leads us to her son the statue brought here for this evening's act of consecration statue of Our Lady of Fatima as a special envoy of Pope Francis Cardinal Conrad Krajewski is in Fatima, Portugal, the location of the 1917 apparitions of Our Lady to three shepherd children. Cardinal Krajewski is there. He's the Pope's almoner. Pope Francis sent him in his name to especially be there to carry out the consecration there as well. So that will happen uh, today in Fatima. The Holy Father also sent a letter to his brother bishops all over the world asking them to join him in carrying out this consecration as well. Uh, he also sent them a copy of the prayer of the act of consecration. Pope Francis invited not only bishops but priests, religious, lay people, and Christians everywhere to join our voices today in prayer for peace for Ukraine. We know that there are many prayer groups following along, shrines, cathedrals, parishes all over the world who are listening to our broadcast this evening. If you're following us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, drop us a comment. Let us know how you're praying for peace. We mentioned earlier, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI is also participating in this evening's consecration from his chapel in the residence in the Mater Ecclesia Monastery here in the Vatican. Today, in a special way, the world is coming together to pray for peace. And as we so often do, we turn to our Heavenly Mother in this time of need. It was the Virgin Mary and her apparitions in Fatima, Portugal, who asked that Russia be consecrated to her Immaculate Heart. And this was carried out by Pope Francis' predecessors. In fact, St. John Paul II did so on this very day, here in 1984, in St. Peter's Square. Pope Francis said his decision to perform the act of consecration for the nations that are at war came partly in response to numerous requests by the people of God. And so this, this cry from many parts of the world to renew this consecration, which we will do here after this evening's penance service. Pope Francis said he wanted the consecration to take place on this day, the same day as the penance service 
so that our our plea would rise up to God from our hearts that have been cleansed from sin. And they receive the beautiful statue of Our Lady of Fatima known throughout the world. This one comes from the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima here in Rome, San Vittorino. She made a, pers a precious journey across the eternal city to be here today for today's celebration. There's a great feeling of silence here in St. Peter's Basilica, a somber silence, again, uh, the time of reflection, of deep reflection. In silence of our sins. It's important to note that there are about 3,500 people inside St. Peter's Basilica for this evening's celebration, but there's also about 2,000 people outside, uh, people who uh, just wanted to be near, wanted to be part of the celebration, but who weren't able uh, to get in to St. Peter's Basilica on this beautiful evening here in Rome. As we mentioned, the whole world's coming together to pray with Pope Francis so that the we pray for the for Russia, for Ukraine, for the peoples living there. That everybody's hearts will be open to to peace. And we mentioned Pope Francis has sent the papal almoner to Fatima. Again, adding to the global nature of this historic event. We'd like to point out that um, at the end of the consecration, the bells of St. Peter's 
uh, will be wrong. This is always a very spe special and solemn moment. Uh, the bells will ring out for peace. Peace in all parts of the world that are experiencing war. Unfortunately, all too many. As Pope Francis has mentioned, he sometimes feels like the Third World War is taking place in piecemeal. This war and that war and so on. And so tonight, uh, also a plea for peace for humanity. For every country, every peoples around the world. There is so much need for this, for peace. Pope Francis, in his homily, made a point of saying that Mary was full of grace and therefore free from sin. God was able to begin a new story, he said, of salvation and peace in her. He said, in her, history took a turn. God changed history by knocking at the door of Mary's heart. Pope Francis again tying this evening's penance service, which we are currently in, to his wish to consecrate Russia and Ukraine to her immaculate heart he said because renewed by God's forgiveness may we too knock at the door of her immaculate heart Pope Francis said in union with the bishops and the faithful around the world I desire in a solemn way to bring all that we are presently experiencing to the immaculate heart of Mary I wish to renew to her the consecration of the church and the whole of humanity and to consecrate to her in a particular way the Ukrainian people and the Russian people who with filial affection venerate her as a mother. Pope Francis continued saying "There's no ma this is no magic formula but a spiritual act. It is an act of complete trust on the part of children who amid the tribulation of this cruel and senseless war that threatens our world turn to their mother reposing all their fears and pain in her heart and abandoning themselves to her. Again, dozens of priests have been placed throughout St. Peter's Basilica this evening, and the Holy Father himself continues to hear confession. We are getting word that he has confessed, uh, to this point, seven people. And the beautiful notes of the organ playing this evening as confessions continue. We see images from around St. Peter's Basilica, but most of all, the image of a, of a full St. Peter's Basilica. And also people gathering out in the square, scenes that have disappeared somewhat over the past couple of years uh, and are not taking place with great regularity. So it's nice to see that again. You see the Vatican bells there. If you're following this uh, television on, on the, about the left side of your screen, at the end of the consecration, uh, those bells will ring out to bring the celebration to a close.
as the choir continues to sing and the faith will continue to go to confession. We encourage you, if you have a copy of the Catechism, to look through it, to really appreciate, to go back and learn once more what this sacrament is all about, or maybe you're learning uh, for the first time uh, what confession is all about as we reflect on our sins. We have to know what we were doing was wrong and that we had free will to choose it. And we chose to do the bad action anyway. These things that separate us from God, cut us off from God's grace. And so the need for confession, to confess our sins, to carry out penance, to receive the forgiveness of those sins so that we may again be readmitted to the life of grace the life with God in grace and penance is a, a part of that there's interior penance for example as the catechism points out there's fasting, prayer, almsgiving which express conversion in relation to oneself, to God, and to others, because sin not only affects us, each one of us, but also our relationship to God and also to our neighbors, to, to our brothers and sisters. The Catechism points out that we should make an effort at reconciliation with one's neighbors. We should be concerned for the salvation of our neighbor and practice charity, which, as the Bible tells us, covers a multitude of sins. And so this is an invitation, as the Catechism reminds us, to conversion through our daily life, through gestures, our concern for the poor, the exercise and the defense of justice and right admitting our faults to one's brethren, fraternal correction when necessary, a revision of our lives, examination of our conscience, maybe also reaching out to receive spiritual direction. Penance is also expressed through the acceptance of suffering, maybe the difficulties we encounter in our lives, accepting those as penance for our sins. Catechism also mentions endurance of persecution for the sake of righteousness and taking him what one's cross each day and following Jesus is the surest way of penance, the Holy Father says. And if you look in scripture, there are many references to penance, the need for forgiveness, and crying out for God's mercy. There are the penitential Psalms, for example, in the Old Testament. For example, Psalm 51, and we'll recite it here as the music continues to play, as we hear in Psalm 51, which says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to thy abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done what is evil in thy sight, so that thou art justified in thy sentence, and blameless in thy judgment. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Again, that's Psalm 51. A very beautiful penitential psalm. Pope Francis exiting the confessional now, having uh, heard confessions from several people here this evening.
Pope Francis now making his way up to uh, his chair that is here, just in front of the high altar in the Basilica. And many of the faithful who have gone to confession also making their way back now. We've been having confessions for about 30 minutes. Holy Father putting on once more his liturgical vestments. When confessions have concluded, the Holy Father will uh, recite a prayer of thanksgiving. And then we will have the act of consecration after that. Again, this evening's penance service opens the 24 hours for the Lord initiative, um, initiative of the Pontifical Council for the promotion of the new evangelization. And so these, this 24 hours for the Lord is taking place in dioceses throughout the world, again, as part of our journey, our Lenten journey towards Easter. Holy Father, hear confessions from about 10 or 11 people. That's the official word uh, we're getting here. Again, as we read sacred scripture, both the Old and the New Testaments, you can find this theme of reconciliation, of coming back to God, but also God mm -hmm. who goes in search of his people, as Pope Francis mentioned in his homily this evening. God reaching out, as he did through the covenants in scripture, of him coming to find us, him coming to search for us. So in confession, we take that step towards him and confess our sins so that we may be united with him. And one of the a beautiful part of the book of Ezekiel 11, it says, I will give them a new heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh so that they may know my statutes and keep my ordinances and obey them. They shall be my people and I will be their God. We've talked a little bit about how to prepare for confession. Again, the examination of conscience, the actual going to confession, asking for the Lord's forgiveness, receiving that forgiveness from the priest, carrying out your act of penance. And then we think, what do we do after that? We look to the lives of those who have faithfully followed Christ and are inspired with a new reason 
for seeking the city that is to come. And at the same time, as Lumen Gentium says, we are shown a most safe path by which we can keep our life of prayer. Let's listen now to Pope Francis. Carissimi fratelli, dopo aver sperimentato nel sacramento della riconciliazione la bontà e la dolcezza dell'amore di Dio per noi, Dear brothers and sisters, ever experiencing in the sacrament of reconciliation the goodness and sweetness of God's love for us, filled with the Holy Spirit, we praise and thank God our Father. And let us renew our resolve to always be ready to account for the hope that is in us. Dio che nella grandezza della tua misericordia da peccatori ci trasformi in giusti e dalla tristezza del peccato ci fai passare la gioia della vita nuova. O oh God, who in the greatness of your mercy transform us from sinners into righteous ones. From the sadness of sin you lead us to the joy of new life. Assist us with the power of your spirit so that by accepting the gift of justification of faith we may endure until the day of Christ the Lord who lives and reigns forever. Signore sia con voi. It's the Holy Father's blessing. Bow your heads to receive the blessing. Signore guidi i vostri cuori nell'amore di Dio e nella pazienza del Cristo. Amen. Possiate sempre camminare nella vita nuova e piacere in tutto il Signore. Amen. Nella benedizione di Dio Onipotente, Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo, discenda su di voi e con voi rimanga sempre. Amen. The Holy Father's blessing there, which extends to all of us following live along as well, TV, radio, through social media.
will now proceed with the act of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. A chair is being brought forth just in front of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima as Pope Francis takes his place. Holy Father reverently touching the statue and blessing himself. O Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, in this time of trial, we turn to you. As our Mother, you love us and know us. No concern of our hearts is hidden from you. Mother of Mercy, how often we have experienced your watchful care and your peaceful presence. You never cease to guide us to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Yet we have strayed from that path of peace. We have forgotten the lesson learned from the tragedies of the last century the sacrifice of the millions who fell in two world wars. We have disregarded the commitments we made as a community of nations. We have betrayed people's dreams of peace and the hopes of the young. We grew sick with greed. We thought only of our own nations and their interests. We grew indifferent and caught up in our selfish needs and concerns. We chose to ignore God and to be satisfied with our illusions, to grow arrogant and aggressive, to suppress innocent lives and to stockpile weapons. We stopped being our neighbor's keepers and stewards of our common home. We have ravaged the garden. Two young children now, a boy and a girl, bringing a basket of white roses with Pope Francis to lay at Our Lady's feet. Pope Francis reverently touching the statue and blessing himself once more under the loving maternal gaze of Mother mm -hmm. Mary. A beautiful prayer of consecration. Pope Francis now incensing the statue of Our Lady there, symbol of our prayer rising up to heaven.
Holy Father greeting the young boy and the young girl who helped him place the flowers in front of the statue, statue making a little sign of cross on their foreheads. Francis looking intently now at the statue of Our Lady. Pope Francis has a great devotion to the Mother of God, has shown so many times during his pontificate, visibly moved during this prayer of consecration, truly heartfelt his supplication, his prayer to the Queen of Peace. Pope Francis making his way out of the Basilica, but stopping to greet some young children uh, on his way out. hymn continues as this evening's celebration of penance and the consecration uh, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary has now come to a close. We're so thankful that you were able to join us uh, for today's broadcast. Our thanks again uh, to our partners in Mondo Vision, Mondo Visione, uh, who helped make this possible, and to all of you who've joined us throughout the world. Thank you for being with us and our broadcast partners as well. A truly historic moment, one that hopefully will bear much fruit. Again, in this time of trial, we turn as we often do to our mother, Mother Mary. This historic consecration in a special way for the people of Russia and Ukraine. Who's the Holy Father said, venerate you, dear mother, with a great love. The Holy Father recalled the peoples decimated all over the world by war, hunger, injustice, and poverty. And he prayed, Mother of God and our mother, to your immaculate heart, we solemnly entrust and consecrate ourselves, the church, and all humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. Grant that war may end, he said, and peace spread throughout the world. And we'll leave you with these images now from St. Peter's Basilica. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Mary Shevlin. On behalf of all of us here at Vatican Media, we wish you a blessed solemnity of the Annunciation, and we hope that you will continue to pray with us for peace. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praise be Jesus Christ.